Hello, everybody. I'm on the mic in video today because I'm trying out a little something that I would like to bring to the Third Realm Integration Podcast, which is um, a video episode that I'm going to go live with. It's not going to be pre recorded. I'm just jumping on here to kind of figure out, work out some quirks and get some ideas flowing. But on Friday evenings at 7.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to jump on and do a YouTube Live. And I'm just going to rip. And whoever wants to join, everybody's welcome. Questions that you drop in the chat will drive the conversation. So I'll come with an idea and I'll come with a topic and I'll start to unpack it. But if we get people to jump on, and join in the chat and ask questions that's going to drive the episode. So I'll probably jump on for like an hour and I don't want to have guests on the podcast. So I think this is going to be a great way to generate some conversation, but conversation through the airwaves of whoever's listening out there. If it's one person, I love it. If it's two, it's great. If it's none, I'm just going to rip with just me. So I wanted to get on here and practice a little bit because I have some thoughts that I would like to share about the upcoming new moon in Taurus that is going to be on May 19th. And this is going to be a major one, you guys. So we have a new moon in Taurus. Okay, so what does that mean? A new moon, it's the time where the moon in the sky is the brightest. It is like peak feminine energy of creating a new beginning. It is really about using the creative forces that live within us and that we can access beyond us to carve a new path forward. Okay, that's the moon. Mother moon wants to start new. She wants to start fresh. She's given you the opportunity and the energy to do that. So this is about change and it's about setting an intention for birthing anew. What other qualities are involved in this lineup? Well, we got to add Taurus to the mix. Okay, now Taurus, my lovely Taurians, I love you all so much. You guys give me a run for my money. Um, fixed sign, rooted, strong like a bull, okay? Uh, values, material possessions, money, stability, and structure. Okay, so now we have this first lineup. Now we have more to come, but let's just work with this first lineup. New moon plus Taurus. What does that mean? It means that now we have the opportunity to use our creative energy from the good old mother, mother moon to create a foundation. A lot of people are looking for jobs right now. A lot of people are birthing new ideas into their career path. A lot of people are brainstorming about ways to create a foundation underneath them. And yeah, Taurus does represent money and it does represent, you know, a strong 3D reality, very earthbound. So we're like, we're down here. It's heavy, heavy vibration. It's, it really is dense energy. Now, I don't say that to, um, to be unkind to our Taurian friends. They're there for a reason. They're teaching us something about the value of material possessions, financial stability, and our resources. Now, they don't necessarily have to be financial resources, but that is typically what Taurians and the Taurus energy and the Taurus archetype represents. However, we can be rich and abundant in all kinds of resources. We can be rich in the resource of our heart with love and compassion. We can have plenty of resources in the creative energy that we have, our ideas, what we want to create, what we want to birth, what we want to produce. So, I mean, we can be, we can be abundant in connection, connection to a spiritual divine realm. We can be supported through that. And we can be rich in that, you know, so we don't need to be rich in material resources. We can be rich in our energy. We can be rich in our spirit. So, when we think about new energy and birthing a new, and then we think about the steadfast energy of Taurus, the pushing through obstacles, not giving up. Granted, Taurus is a fixed sign, so watch out for laziness. 
You want to make sure that that's not at the forefront, that you're really using this energy to drive a new path forward and to actually step beyond the present moment for a second and look down the road a little bit. How can I create a stable foundation for myself for the long haul, not just like an immediate quick fix? Like, what's my longer term plan? What what am I going to follow through with that is going to take some time and energy that I have to stay committed to? And this Taurus energy is going to help you move through the obstacles and actually bring your ideas into fruition. It's all about persistence. It's all about determination. Okay. So you want to have a goal, set an intention for a goal right now and stay steady on it. Don't do what, uh, what us Geminis like to do and um, change our mind every other day, you know, like pick something and really stick with it, make it worthwhile, make it something that you want to nurture and that you, you, you see yourself having the focus and the attention to stay with it. Now we also have a sun moon sextile with Mars. Okay. Or should I, the way that you, the way that you say it is the sun moon sextile Mars. Okay. So what does that mean? The sun and the moon the mother and the father of the Zodiac. They represent the union of marriage in the cosmos. The sun represents the intellect. The moon represents the emotions. And so when they become sextile, sextile is a harmonious aspect. So they're complementing each other. So a lot of people might actually be finding their groove right now in the way in which their mind and heart communicate. Okay, now what does that mean? I did a whole episode on the Third Realm Integration podcast about the addict archetype. Now, I went kind of deep on how the the obstacle of the addict archetype that keeps them in the lower vibration energy, the shadow side of that archetype, is when the mind and the heart are not communicating. There's a conflict. Your heart's telling you to do one thing, Go use that drug. Go engage in that behavior. Relapse with that problematic thing that 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 really haunts you. The mind is saying, nah, just do it. Just do it. The heart says, dude, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. That's not good for you. That's not good for you. The heart is saying, follow what your soul wants you to do, your higher self. Does your higher self want you to use that drug? Does your higher self want you to engage in that behavior? Maybe. I don't know. It really depends on what your purpose here is. If your purpose on this planet is to learn how to be in suffering, to learn how to be powerless, to learn the value of victim consciousness, and, you, and you're really supposed to go into that, then maybe you are supposed to go in and engage in the behavior that's going to cause you the pain and suffering that you need to learn how to integrate. I don't know. My experience is that most people probably don't really need to be there. At least the people that cross my path, they don't need to be stuck in that pain and suffering. They're not really supposed to be wallowing in the victim consciousness of the blame complaint. Like, oh, my life sucks. There's nothing I can do about it. This is a bummer. Nothing ever works out for me. I try all the time and here's how it ends up all the time. No, and like, that's not my jam. I'm like, okay, you're feeling hopeless. You're feeling despair. Use that energy, build it up, lean into it and get it, get it activated and use it. Get angry about it. Get pissed off. You don't deserve to be less than. You don't deserve to be suffering. You don't deserve to be stuck. You like being on the hamster wheel, going around and around the I'm seeing the same thing every day, all day. It's the same tune. It's the same story. It's the same play. No, you're the director. You're the casting director. You're the main lead in the play. You get to decide whatever play you want to show up today. What what play do you want to be in? You want to be in the play where you feel terrible about yourself and you're hopeless about your future? That's one option. Where's that going to get you? Or do you want to be in the play that's going to get you to where you need to be for your soul to evolve so you can pay off the karmic debt and you don't have to come back to repeat the difficult challenge to learn the lesson, learn the lesson now. And so when the, when the intellect and the heart come into alignment, the voice, the throat chakra gets unblocked because when these two are fighting, this is, a blo- this is blocked. 
So we don't know how to communicate, yes, but we also don't know how to rein in the power of choice. Right here is choice. What you going to do, okay? This is about the movement forward. When these two come into alignment, there's a huge push from the universe to move you forward into action and to utilize your power of choice to lead you where your soul wants you to go. And that's when you start following your intuition and you start following the spirit realm where your higher self is speaking to you saying, I got you. Go this way. Don't be afraid. Stand strong. Stand in power. Have confidence. Have courage. The cowardly lion, right? Like, got to look right here for the strength to support you to move forward. And that's where we're at. So when the intellect of the sun and the heart of the moon come into alignment, and they are in alignment right now and going to be in the next couple of days, this beautiful, beautiful union. Use it. And it's sextile Mars. So what does that mean? Mars is all about the warrior. It's all about the action. It's all about the fight. It's all about the drive forward. Now, you can express the, the, the lower side of that archetype and be violent and rageful. Come with that ugly energy where you're angry and yelling at people and castrating people everywhere you go. Like you can be in that space. You can use Mars to do that if you want. But the higher side of that warrior archetype is to channel the path of the hero and the heroine's journey. Use the union and the marriage of the mind and the heart to move that energy up through the body, out through your power of choice with action-driven and focus. Action-driven goals and energy and focus, focus, focus. Don't be getting distracted all around here. We don't need scattered energy right now. This is all about getting yourself on the path. And it's beautiful that the Mars is there because it's going to push you forward. Just stay steadfast on what you want the outcome to be. Don't lose sight of all this energy. There's a lot of energy going on. So here's your opportunity to find your sense of purpose, to find what your higher self is here to do. What are you here to do? What are you here to learn? What are you here to move with? Now, I have, what, Sun in Gemini, Mars in Gemini, and that's between my ninth and 10th house. So, actually, let me look that up real quick. I got to have this in front of me. I always freaking forget. But what I will tell you is that the way that this energy is moving for me is crazy right now. Yeah. So I have Mars and Gemini. Now, if the sun and the moon is going to sextile Mars, it means it's going to affect my capacity for communication, my intellect, all the qualities of Gemini, my ability to stay down the middle road, be fair and balanced and see both sides. And it's in my 10th house, my house of career. And Gemini is split right there with half in my ninth house of higher education, half in my 10th house of career. Everything that's happening in my life right now, all of the progress that's being made, all of the hard work that I've put into to getting to this point, it's all taking shape right now. I'm about to be licensed in Idaho in a month. I'll be able to take insurance, doing telehealth for folks in Idaho. I'll then be getting the license in New Jersey to be finalized, then the license in South Carolina to be finalized, then the license in Florida. So now it's a ripple effect. I only need one thing to take shape, which is what I've been working for, where I've been focusing my energy. I just passed the second licensing exam. Boom, 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 boom. Now it's popping. Now we're grooving. So the stagnation of wherever you have been maybe the last couple of years, and not really stagnation, but you've been in, in the lab, you know? You've been in the lab cooking up the experiment. And now you have the end result. You have the final product. And you're going to be able to assess it now. Did this work out well? Did it not work out well? You know, like, did I get what I wanted? Either way, it's manifesting. It's now tangible. It's right here. So for me, it hits on higher education. I'm finishing my PhD. I got my proposal due in two weeks. Now we're going to be done with that piece. Now we're moving right on to running the experiment, which is going to be amazing because it's all about the heroine's journey. My study is on the use of uncon 
unconditional love and compassion, but really unconditional love for female psychedelic practitioners. Okay. Using the con the concept, or I should say the conceptual framework of the myth of the heroine's journey to frame my whole understanding of how I'm going to unpack the results of the study. So major shit going on, major. And so this sun, moon, sextile, and Mars is a great time to use this energy to come into alignment here, resolve addictive patterns, but also resolve any blocks that you have around your power of choice and your independence and your level of responsibility. How ready are you to take full responsibility for the outcomes of your life? Because only you are responsible. The quantum field shows you every version of you, okay? So whatever, two years ago, you had a decision to make, you chose this way. Well, the you that could have chosen that way did. And that version of you is living out here in another reality out in the quantum field. All of the choices that you've made in life are just one thread that exists in the quantum field. The other versions of you that represent all the other, all, all the other choices that you could have made, that also exists out there. The point is, is if you focus and channel your energy on the exact outcome that you want, and you don't get distracted by spending time in fear-based thinking and worry about what else could happen, you're just focusing on the one outcome. You will get that outcome. You got to get your energy lined up. And that's how you start manifesting. You come into alignment with everything. You channel the energy, you focus. Now, the square with Saturn. Mm -mm -mm, our lovely Saturn in the sky. Saturn's a tough one. Saturn is dense. Saturn represents time. Saturn represents all of the 3D qualities, time, money, resources, responsibility, being a part of this system, even when you don't want to be, authority. What's your relationship with authority? Ask yourself that question because if you have a toxic relationship and a lot of resistance with authority, it means you're going you're gonna to fail miserably at being able to decipher the language of your intuition, which is your inner authority. So if you resist authority out here, you're going to resist authority in here, which means you now have no spiritual compass at all. Your intuition is like screaming at you. And it's like your ears are like folded over. It's like, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Fat or freaking Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Your intuition is talking to you and you're hearing wah, 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 wah. Because you don't even have an understanding to even hear what the hell it's even saying. You guys are like two ships passing in the night. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not even hearing it. Where does that leave you? If you have no intuition, means you got to rely solely on the mind. And we know where that gets us. It gets us into an over, an overactivated ego. Because now you only have the ego. So now you're strengthening the ego out of, out of fear which means it's a weak, weak, fragile ego. It's not strong. So you're not strong here. Now you're not strong here. What are you going to do about it? You got to learn how to resolve your conflict with authority. Authority is not the enemy. Your perception is that it is the enemy. That does not make it a fact. So now's a good time to kind of lean in to the relationship that you have with authority and start asking yourself, is there a better way I could do this? Can I surrender a little bit, give a little bit, give and take? Can I create an interdependent relationship with authority around me? Because if I'm constantly fighting it, it means I'm constantly fighting my own self. My higher self and me are in a constant battle. And you will never find your direction that way. You're constantly going to be in pain and suffering if that's, if that's the relationship that you have with authority. Your intuition is your most powerful asset. If you can't relate to it, you're going to be lost. And the only way that you're going to know how to find stability is to keep the fight going with the authority. So that that you'll you'll use that as your stability and foundation is very toxic. So Saturn represents restriction and limitation. 
So pay attention to where Saturn is in your chart. I have it in the third house of communication. So I got a lot going on with communication right now. And I am being tasked to find my way through my ability or lack thereof to communicate how I feel, but I need to do it with an open heart. My relationship with communication is, is um, strained because usually when I'm feeling something, I have a hard time communicating it and I hold it on. I hold on to it. I hold back a lot. So I create a blockage here. You can even hear it in my voice. Like even just my voice is starting to get that raspy sound. Vocal fry. And so it'll come out in anger and rage. And that's not what I'm trying to do. It's really not what I'm what I'm here to, to learn. I'm here to learn how to transmute that anger into love, pure love. So Saturn in the third house for me, restriction on my capacity to communicate. And I have all this amazing new moon energy, just like you guys have, but it's going to be, it's going to be um, challenged a bit by Saturn. And that's exactly what I'm going through right now. So pay attention to your doubts and fears. That's what's going to hold you back right now. It's the only thing that's going to hold you back. Nothing else. And so think about what you have to do to get more disciplined. Use the energy of Saturn. Rein it in and use it for yourself to figure out a way to get focused, simplify things, and persevere. Be disciplined. Create a schedule for yourself. I'm on this thing. Like, though, you guys that know me, you guys know I work night jobs, overnight jobs for years. Like, night owl to the max. It's usually when my mind is turned on. And I have, like, completely flipped that. I'm asleep by like nine o'clock. I'm up five, six a.m. That's why, y'all, don't be calling me after like five p.m. because I'm not answering the damn phone. I'm sleeping. You know what I'm saying? All right. So then we have the conjunction with Uranus. So we have the Sun Moon sextile Mars, the Sun Moon square Saturn, and the Sun Moon conjunction with Uranus. Uranus, as they like to say. Uranus is all about being the rebel rouser. Talk about resistance to authority. That's your dude. That's you right there. You're Uranus. You like to shake things up. Unexpected, unpredictability, surprises, right? So we have the harmony between here and here. Now having to come into a relationship with all of this uncertainty and unpredictability and eruption. The element of surprise. So what are you going to do? Well, the best way to navigate that energy is to use the union of the mind and the heart to create a steady flow. So when unexpected events come up, you're ready. It's all in the prep, you guys. It's all in the prep. So you ground yourself. You stay steady. You stay connected to source, which emanates from the heart center. Open up the heart. Find your energy of stability there. Now you're going to be ready to move with whatever comes your way. It's like the matrix. You're just going to fly in at you. You're just going to move right out of the way. You're going to use the momentum that you are already, have already built. Not, rah, rah, rah. don't block it. Don't come up with the block. Mm -mm. Just move out of the way. Move out of the way. It's coming at you. Just move with it. Oh, you want to come flying at me? Eh. See ya. Don't put up the wall. Just step right out of the way. Be mindful if you're having the urge to act impulsively. Challenge yourself to do delayed gratification. Say to yourself, I really want to do this thing right now, but you know what? Why don't we do it tomorrow at 5 o'clock? Why don't we at least wait till then? Tomorrow at 5 o'clock comes and you say, eh, do I really need to do this right now? I don't think so. Don't be rash. Think long term. Play the script out. How's this going to go? And then we have... The sun, moon, sextile with the beautiful, mm, the love that I have for Neptune is so strong. Neptune is my jam. Oh, represents mermaids, represent, and eh, represents addiction, drugs. It's the planet of drugs and alcohol. Altered consciousness entering to the dreamscape. Neptune is about dreams as well. Creativity, intuition. And most importantly, compassion. So now we have a sextile Neptune. That's, a, that's again, a beautiful aspect. 
Use your dreams to help guide you. Again, use your intuition to stabilize you. Use the energy of compassion and unconditional love from the heart center that Neptune is going to bring in. And all you got to do is look at your chart and see where it is, what area of your life this is going to play out so you are prepared. Um, Neptune is all about inspiration. So if there is any unexpected event that feels like a setback, it's like, wait a second, I thought we were headed in this direction. It's like, whoop, psych. Use the energy of Neptune to help move with any distractions and any setbacks that may arise so you can pursue the final destination. You always want to think about where you're at on the hero or the heroine's journey. What stage? And focus on moving through that stage by learning the lessons along the way that have shown up. And for me, that's a, an incredible foundation to figure out like, okay, where am I at in my life? Like, how's this going? Oh, I'm at this stage of the heroine's journey. Okay, yeah, that makes sense as to why this, this and this and this is coming up. Let me use the opportunity to integrate my patterns, my cosmic soul patterns that I came into this lifetime with to work with. Let me use the energy of the planets that I am in relationship with to draw it in, use the energy to transmute, create the process of alchemical transmutation inside the body to meet your soul so you can figure out what the hell you're supposed to be doing here. You dig? There's a formula to this, you guys, and I'm no mathematician, trust me. But there is a formula here. There is knowledge here. The, this is the universal truth one of as to how to figure out how to live as a spiritual being having a human experience this is what it's all about use the energy of the planets to figure out how you're going to open up this pathway and so let's do a meditation let's take everything that we just unpacked and move it into a meditation so think about your relationship with your heart and your intuition. Think about your relationship with authority and unruly, unpredictable, uncontrollable energy. Think about your relationship with time, money, structure, and responsibility and your father, right? That's Saturn. Think about your relationship with your mother, the moon, your heart, your emotions. When we talk about opening up the heart, we're talking about a coming home. Coming home. It's almost like coming home to the to the womb of the mother, right? Like we're in the womb of Mother Gaia. We're safe here. We're home. We just get disconnected from that often as an as an earth being in the earth school. Come back to home. Come back to the mother's love. And the sun also, father, energy, authority, strong intellect, that's the ego. So get your ego to surrender, let go of the fears, let go of your attachments, your need to control things, and get in tune with a goal that drives your spirit forward. So let's take a moment, get into a comfortable space. We'll close here with a meditation to help you integrate this energy. Get comfortable, keep your camera on if you want to, put it down, lay on the floor, lay on your couch. Find yourself a comfortable spot. Now ask the mind to turn inward. Disconnect from the outside world. All of that can be there and stay there. We'll get to it later. But for right now, we're going to turn inward. And we're going to cultivate a stronger relationship with the intuition and the wisdom of our heart. Pay attention to your breathing. And as the breath leads, let the mind get right in line and follow. So let the mind follow the breath. And with each breath, inhale through the nose 
really breathe into your spiritual heart, your heart center, right in the center of the chest, just right of the physical heart, right here in the heart chakra. You can even take your hand and place it on the heart center. Breathe in through the nose, and when you release through the mouth, be sure that your exhale is slow, long, and controlled. Place yourself in the space between the breaths. Anchor yourself there in that space. And with each breath, visualize a speck of green light right in the center of the chest, starting to grow and glow. Breathing into the heart center and expanding the light with each inhale. Allow this vibration, this energy, this light frequency to expand in size with each breath until this bright green light fills the whole center of the chest. And now with your mind's eye, think about a goal that serves your highest good. So let go of goals around, oh, I need to make money to be okay. I need this to be okay. I need more of this. I need more of that. Move out of scarcity mindset. Recognize that you have enough of what you think you need more of. And instead, focus on a goal that you would do for free. It fulfills you so much and it feeds your soul so much and it gives you so much of an opportunity for your soul to evolve here that you literally would do it for free. And every morning when you woke up, you would actually be excited to move closer and closer towards that goal. It's what drives you. It's what brings you joy. It's what brings you peace. It's what activates you. It's what gets you excited about life. Think about that goal and visualize it in your mind's eye. Place it out in front of you as an image. Maybe remember the last time you felt this. Put that image in front of you. Or just come up with an image of you exercising that goal. Breathe into the heart center and send out a stream of green light from the heart center. Send it out to the image in front of you that represents the choice that you made to pursue the goal that is here to serve your highest good. And it's already happened. You've already achieved the goal. You're already doing the thing. In the quantum space, the reality already exists that you have that already. What you're doing is you're connecting into it from the energy of your heart center. So send that energy out from the center of the chest out to the image that represents and holds the vibration of the achieved goal, the goal that is here to serve your highest good. Send that energy out, wrap it around the image, envelop it, nurture it, bathe it, hug it. And then draw the stream of green light from the image back towards you. Allow it to enter you at the center of the chest. Opening up your heart to receive the vibration of pure, unconditional love. The love that says that everything is perfect and beautiful exactly the way it is. Radical acceptance of what is. Nothing needs to be changed here. Allow that stream to move through the rest of your body, down your torso, down your legs, down into the soles of your feet, up out of your arms, down to your extremities, up through your throat, out through the top of the head and the third eye. Come back to this meditation at any point. 
remembering that you have the power to manifest, which means to choose the outcome that you want and the outcome that you desire. When you come into alignment and the sun of the head and the intellect and the ego aligns with the energy of the heart and the moon, it means that your power of choice in the throat is unrestricted and limitless. You focus on the goal that you want. You focus on that goal, producing the outcome that you want. You act as if it's already happened because it has. It's happened somewhere else in a different reality. So now you're going to access that track and you're going to pull it into focus and you're going to head down that track consciously. And so you're going to choose the outcome that you want. You're not going to kill yourself and work hard to get it, like drive yourself crazy and spin your wheels and burn yourself out to get it. No, you're going to let it go and you're going to let it flow. And you're going to follow the track to get to the goal that's already existing out there. And you're just going to choose it and plunk it in to your play of consciousness. So many blessings to everybody who's out there in this turbulent time. Do your best to let go of fear. Trust that everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. No matter what. No matter what. Everything is going to be okay. You're going to make it through whatever it is. Stay steady. Open up your heart. Choose the goal that you want and let go of fear in order to get it. I'm wishing you an abundant, creative, and harmonious new moon in Taurus on May 19th. And with that, I'm going to leave it there, you guys. It's been a blessing. I'm happy to jump on here, especially with video. I usually just do audio. So leave any comments you want in the chat. Tell your friends, tell one person to just jump on, see what we got going on here today. And I'll leave it there. May the light always lead your way. Be well, everybody.